Hello here, it's Void Mage Gamer, and I'm going to do a deck tech on my friend's deck, Narset Enlightened Master. So you know you're in for a bunch of cancer now. So go ahead and tell us how you do your deck here. Uh, well, as many of you know, the goal of the deck is to play Narset, swing as soon as possible, exiling the top four, and then playing things for free. So just show the ability there real quick for anyone who yeah. doesn't know. Now, you can't cast creatures, so you run very few creatures. Now, I'll start off by showing the three creatures that I do run. The first being Grand Abolisher, which is just preventing Narset from being countered, and your other spells as well. It's a good one to include. Uh, a really nice one is the Generator Servant, which gives Narset haste and gets her out much faster by having your two mana. You want to get her out as soon as possible. Yeah, pretty much. Winning. And then the other card, which is a, a decent card, not a auto include, but just yep. is a good utility thing. You might play it once in a while, but usually you're going to end up exiling it. Give yourself that extra red. It can be amazing in certain situations. <laughs> Isn't that what's in like every single legacy deck now? Yep. For uh, turn one combos. Yeah. And then the three planeswalkers that I run are Jace the Mind Sculptor, so that you can. Uh, kind of manipulate the top of your library to make sure you get what you want to be getting and if you happen to be able to ult him sure cool uh, you can prevent your opponent from doing good things you can return things to your hand so overall it, it really it's worth the spot I think uh, Venser is really nice you can untap some of your artifacts that I'll get to in a minute he can make Narshan unblockable so she can't get killed by your opponent's creatures nice um, and if you ult him he also wins you the game pretty much so good thing good thing there uh, Elspeth is pretty cool. Uh, she is she is a win con. Um, since Narsen only has three power, uh, her minus three can be a very good board wipe for everyone else's creatures. Uh, you can also get your soldiers if you need them in the late game. Um, her minus seven isn't really very useful, but her other two abilities are. Can't go wrong. There. Can't go wrong there. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about the artifacts here. So of course you want to have a ton of artifacts so you can get her out as early as possible. Absolutely. So some of those amazing artifacts would be Mana Vault, Soul Ring of course, Mana Crypt. I run Crow Mox and Mox Diamond in order to get as much mana as I can. Grim Monolith. Wow. Uh, the Soul Monolith is decent. Um, and then you run one of each Singet. You know, get your color sources if you need them. And then the other... Uh, the is it sink it isn't foil yet, sorry. Uh, Pented Prism is a good one I want to talk about. It's pretty much a two for two. Two mana, get, you know, two counters on it, remove two counters, get two colored mana. So, pretty nice, pretty nice one. Chromatic Lantern, obviously, if you need it. Um, Coalition Relic gives you two for three, you know. Put a charge counter on it, and then you get two mana during your main phase when you tap it. So, pretty nice one. And then Lotus Petal is another zero drop that gives you any color when you sack it. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong there. All right, so let's look at the land base real quickly. I want to go over two lands that are very, very useful. The first is, of course, Cavern of Souls, because the biggest issue with Narset decks is when Narset gets countered, right? So having, getting Cavern of Souls out is super important. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does happen, it is good. All right, so that's that. And then the other really nice one is Hold the Bandit Lord, which... Look at that real quick. Yeah, yeah. Comes into play caps, pay three life, add one to your mana pool, that mana is spent to cast a creature spell, that creature has haste. That is very important. It is very important indeed. So you get, usually Nars is coming out turn three, so if you play this on turn two, uh, then turn three you have it up, pay the three life, give her haste, usually you'll end up winning the game, probably, unless you get really unlucky. Now, in the most Narsa decks, you want to run all of the fetches that you can. So you need to get your deck, you need to get all the lands out of your deck that you can. So every single fetch is going to make the probability of getting something good a little bit higher, right? So if you didn't feel like, look at that. Yeah, if you didn't feel like running all the fetches that aren't, that are, that are only one of your colors, uh, it, it makes sense to do it in the, in the long run. So this is all nine, the nine that you can use. The only one you can't use would be the Verdant, uh, yeah, Verdant Catacombs, which is black, green. So that's the only one that has zero Narset's colors. So this is nine other ones. So each one of these can search you. Uh, probably the first ones you're going to get would be a Tundra, Plateau, or a Volcanic Island, right? So get all your colors out untapped. If for some reason you don't get those, you can be going for things like Steam Vents, Hallowed Fountain, 
Sacred Foundry. So you're pretty much going to get, it's really kind of hard to not end up getting the correct three colors in this deck. Of course, you have things like Command Tower, Forbidden Orchard, Reflecting Pool, Mana Confluence, and other Sifters like Rugged Prairie. Got some of these. So you've got, you you really don't end up. Ancient Tomb for yeah. that. And then, and then in your land base, you also have lands such as Crystal Vein, Ancient Tomb, these two sack or well, Crystal Vein sacks to give you two mana. Um, Ancient Tomb taps, you take two, get two mana. So colorless, of course, so you need to have some your three colored sources before you run those, but they help Narsa get out a turn earlier. And then I run these basic lands, two islands, a uh, mountain and a uh, plains just in case for some reason people are able to kill off your your good lands with your strip mine or something like that are they are beautiful get those foil lands foil full arts so that's pretty much the lands you can do whatever you want with lands but i mean if you want to put the money into getting the the optimized deck you're going to need some of those definitely need some of your fetches and stuff like that so let's get on to what really wins the game as i talked about planeswalkers that's good but it's not really what does it what does it is these cards take another turn after this usually they end up costing a lot of mana there's one that one costs eight hmm. uh, that's nine this one's eight kind and of then yeah, don't ten mana, pay the mana for yeah. yeah you don't have to pay any mana so usually as you can see one two three four five six seven eight so there's eight ones if you want to go out and shell even more cash you can get some but those other ones there's like two other uh take another turn cards that i don't have and they're you know 500, 400, 500 bucks. So eventually I'll get them. Are any of these better than the others? Uh, yes. Uh, obviously, time stretch is rather good because you get two turns instead of one. Um, walk the Eons can be good sometimes if you really want to take the buyback cost. Um, but uh, Expropriate is really cool, especially in a multiplayer game. Uh, you get to choose if you want to read it, Steve. Uh, starting with you, each player votes time or money for each time vote. They get a turn after this one for each money vote. Choose a permanent known by the voter and gain control of it. That is nasty. I don't think I, I would just let you have an extra turn. Yeah, so most of the time you're going to end up getting a ton of extra turns because you will obviously choose extra turn. And if your opponent doesn't want to give you an extra turn, then you end up taking their best permanent. Or, so, pretty deadly card. Um, right? Temporal Mastery ends up doing some good work if you can get it to the top of your library, which isn't too hard. You can easily do it for its miracle cost, and obviously off Narset it is good. Uh, Temporal Trespass, also pretty nice. Part of the Water Veil. Beacon of Tomorrow's I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, time Warp, obviously take another turn. Alright, so one of the combos in this deck has to do with Beacons of Tomorrow's. And uh, let's see, uh, it'll probably be in here. And not in there. Where is it? Uh, right here, look right in front of me. And Enter the Infinite. So, Beacon of Tomorrow's plus Enter the Infinite, and then the other card is a Scroll Rack. So right there is one combo, and if you have these three, if you have the Scroll Rack out, and you can't, you enter, enter the Infinite, you can, there's, it, it takes a little, it's a little harder to do, but you can get your whole library, and then you can, if you can cast the Beacon of Tomorrow's, then you can get that on top of your library, and pretty much you can scroll rack it back to the top after you cast it, and have something in. So you would put a random card on top that you would draw for your turn, and then Narset would hit this, and you would cast it, put it in your grave, shuffles into your library, scroll rack, put something random on top, pretty much lets you take infinite turns. Wow. So that is one combo that is very, very good in this deck. Another combo has to do with Sword of Feast and Famine, and uh, Gravated Assault. That is a much more known combo. As you can see, Aggravated Assault says three on type all uh, three into red. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by the additional main phase. Liz Billy only has a sorcery. And Sword of Feast and Famine says when your creature attacks, uh, does combat damage to a player. So it has to deal damage. You just they discard a card and you end top all land. So as you can see. If you have both of these on the field and Narset is able to hit people, which usually is pretty easy with the other enchantments that we'll get to in a sec, um, you pretty much have infinite combat steps, so kills your opponent with infinite damage. Awesome. Pretty fun. All right, some of the other cards like Aggravated Assault or Relentless Assault gives you another combat. Seize the Day is really nice because it has a flashback for three, so you can pretty easily cast it and flashback in the same turn often. Waves of Aggression is nice because you can retrace it. Uh, Savage Beating, World at War. So those five are nice. 
All right, here's some other artifacts that I want to talk about. Expedition map can search you up any land. Uh, I have it in here really to get Cavern of Souls because you have enough to get the other lands, right? But Cavern of Souls can't be tutored except by this, so that's really nice. Strionic Resonator is just nice to copy Narset's abilities, give you eight cards off the top. Dark Steel Plate is there to make her indestructible, so prevents her from getting killed by board wipes. Uh, also indestructible, so it's hard to remove it. Those are some good artifacts. All right, let's go over to some of these other one. So here we have the other instant sorceries. Uh, as you see, Brainstorm is good. So Brainstorm, you get to kind of manipulate the top of your library, draw three, put the ones that you can't cast because they're way too expensive on top and let Narset hit them off for you. Really good. Mystical Tutor searches you for an instant or sorcery. You put it on the top of your library and Narset hits it. Mind's Desire is pretty much like additional Narset triggers. Right, so you have a bunch of junk going on, and then you do this as your last cast. Cast this, and you probably end up getting three, sometimes four additional casting. So you get to exile the top, cast it. So pretty much like Narset, just doubles Narset. Nice. Personal tutor searches for sorcery, such as one of the Take Another Turn cards, Expropriate, like that. Puts it on top of your library, Narset hits it. Long Term Pelions searches for a card, puts it third from the top. Doesn't really matter since Narset hits all four, so it still gets you pretty much whatever you want. Really nice. All right, some more. Uh, one area that some people might not do is run some spot removal. So I tend to run spot removal because against creature decks, sometimes they can go pretty fast and you need to remove the creature so that Narset can get through or you need, you just it's just good, good situational removal. So here we have Pongify, destroy a creature, can't be regenerated, they get a 3-3-8, three, three, and then pretty much the same thing, you get, they get 3-3 three, three, Frog Lizard. The nice thing about these is they get 3-3s, three, and since Narset has first strike, it doesn't really matter. I also run Swords and Plat Path, um, just to get rid of any difficult creatures. I have pathed my own things once in a while to get a land that's not going to happen very often, but it is, it is an option, and it has happened before. All right, so another win con in this deck is these, your wipes. So um, some of the, so you want to obviously kill your opponent's thing. So one of the nice ones, Divine Reckoning. Each player chooses a creature he or she controls, or the rest. Since you are pretty much only running one creature, this pretty much kills everything except Narset, and everyone will get one thing. But if they're still, you know, getting lots of things on the field, this is really nice. Uh, Winds of Wrath destroys all creatures that aren't enchanted. Uh, we'll get to the enchantments in just a second. But Narset usually has some kind of enchantment on her, so that's nice. Um, Raza's Purification chooses three permanents. Each player chooses three permanents. Here she controls and sacks the rest. You'll choose Narset and whatever else you want, and everyone. And this includes lands, so this is a land destroyer. So as soon as if Narset's on the field, you don't need lands anymore. So you might as well get rid of them and get everyone else's at the same time. And then so that's a land destruction. Two other land destructions, obviously Armageddon destroys all lands. Hey, uh, that was on my top 10 list. Yes, very annoying card, but works well in our set. And then Catastrophe can destroy all creatures or lands. So uh, another land destruction card. If you want more land destruction, there are a few other cards, but they are very expensive. I will get them eventually. All right, on to enchantments. To kill with commander damage, you got to have a few things. So a few of the ones... Uh, that just keep Narset from being killed or unquestioned authority. Protection from creatures, you get to draw a card, a little bonus. Make sure get through. Uh, Aquas form is nice, can't be blocked. Uh, the uh, ability of giving her a scry when she attacks is nice because you can put that land that was on the top to the bottom to make sure you get a little closer to the good stuff. Um, I do run Leyline of Anticipation. Uh, just if you have it in the starting hand, you can get stuff going a little faster, cast things so they had flash. Um, it is kind of nice to be able to cast your planeswalkers so they had flash, or maybe to cast some sorcery as though it had flash. So it, it can be useful. Obviously, I'm sure you're all aware, Omniscience is really amazing. You cast things from your hand, it costs a ton of mana, but you can cast everything for free. So if you end up do having a hand, then you can get rid of it with Omniscience. Um, ends up being pretty good, especially when you have Omniscience and Enter the Infinite, as I mentioned over here, then you pretty much win the game, obviously. So that's pretty cool. Steal the Godhead gets that commander damage going a bit faster. Uh, enchant Creature, if it's white, it gets plus one plus one as lifelink. It's blue, it's unblockable. So it puts Narset from having three power to five, which is a little bit higher, so it gets a little more damage. You're gaining life at the same time, which is nice. 
Uh, one thing about this deck is you want to get Narset Haste, as I mentioned, with some of the lands that give her haste and the Generator Servant. Another one is Ashling's Prerogative. Uh, comes into play, choose a odd or even. You always choose even, so creatures with converted mana cost of the chosen value have haste. So if you choose even, Narset will have haste. And creatures with converted mana cost of the chosen value, without the converted mana cost of the chosen value, come into play tapped. So it's a little bonus that you get to keep some things from being able to do things right away. Uh, Angelic Destiny gives her 4-4, four, four, flying first strike. Uh, super deadly, give her some, get that commander damage going. Spectre Ward, 2-2, two, two, protection from all colors. Uh, Flicker Form is a nice one. Uh, you can tap 4 to exile her and then return at the next end step, including all enchantments attached to her. So if somebody were to be able to wrath the board, you could prevent Narset from getting killed, right? Because Narset only has Hexproof and First Strike, so she will still die to a board wipe. So Flicker Form prevents that. Uh, obviously the best enchantment card is Eldrazi Conscription. Gets plus 10, plus 10, and has Annihilator 2. If you get this on the field, you are going to two-shot kill your opponent. Uh, additional Anni Annihilator 2, which is super deadly. So that is probably the best. You see this and you scoop. So uh, to go back over some of the combos, you have Enter the Infinite Scroll Rack and Beacon of Tomorrows. Let's grab that out for you, wherever it went. I think it is right here. There's a combo right there. And then another combo is the Sword of Feast and Famine. Uh, I only run three Planeswalkers, though you can obviously run more. There are quite a few other ones in the colors. Uh, I just found that. And it's uh, Aggravated Assault and yeah. Sword of Feast and Famine. So some people... Yeah, just talk about like how, how events have gone for you. you know, how many commander tournaments have you run at this deck? Uh, well, I've won quite a few tournaments. I don't, I don't run it unless I really want to be mean. And when there's a lot of new people playing, this is not what I want to be running. This is the, my competitive deck. Um, so it's able to get Narset out on turn three pretty often. She takes no prisoners. Nope, that is true. So yeah, it's turn three Narset usually. If she has haste, even better. So it, it, if you get a swing with her, most likely you're winning the game. Sometimes you don't, but... As I said, I only run three Planeswalkers. Other people could run more if they need it. I just found other ones really didn't do that much for me. Uh, planeswalkers again. Those are my Planeswalkers. The three creatures. Now, some people might say uh, run no creatures, and then you can, uh, I forget the name of the artifact, but there's an artifact that has a uh, activate ability of shuffling a creature um, you shuffle, put a creature on the bottom of your library and then reveal until you reveal a creature and put that back into play. Uh, the, so that is another way to keep Narset from dying, but I felt like these three creatures were really kind of worth the slots, so I decided to do the creature version. Um, there's a few other ones out there. Uh, lots of ramp, as I said, take another turns, uh, extra combat phases, destroy all lands, and um, everyone's going to be friends with you. You're going to be the good guy around here, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. Appreciate you doing this on the channel here. Oh, sure, no problem. Thank you. Cool.